And now um, we're going to have some short readings from the English translation of Michael Savitas' great book, Christianisme Restitutio, the Restoration of Christianity. And I have um, pressed two volunteers, um, willing volunteers, into reading these uh, short passages from uh, the book. Not sure that's a common use the mind, but that seems to be necessary. God dwells in the Spirit, and God is the Spirit. God dwells in fire, and God is fire. God dwells in the light, and God is light. God is in the mind, inhabits the mind and God is the mind itself. Our soul is a certain lamp of God. It is like a spark of God's spirit, an image of God's wisdom, created to be sure, but most like that spiritual wisdom and placed within it having an inborn luminescence of divinity, a spark of that primary wisdom and the very spirit of divinity. The spirit of divinity is placed within man even after Adam's sin, so testifies God himself. In the very fruits of the earth, in animals, stones, pearls, metals, treasures, springs, rivers, wells, rain, clouds, thunder and lightning and winds, Christ's mystery was figured. In the food of paradise, in the manna, in Aaron's staff, in the wooden tabernacle, in the bronze serpent, in the Ark of the Covenant, in the vessels of gold, silver, or whatever other materials, in the stone that produces water, in the stone temple, in the angular stone, in the lion, the eagle, the turtle dove, the calf, the lamb, and all other things, Christ was adumbrated. The Son of God shares his own relationship with us, but he calls us brothers because he is a human being. As a human being, he is the firstborn of the dead. Thus, he is the firstborn human being, and having been born a human being, he is a son. In the book on the teaching of Muhammad, Christ is called the Word, Spirit, and Power of God. Muhammad called Christ Rohala, which means Spirit of God, since he was born from the very breath of God. Finally, although he attributes practically everything to Christ, he does not recognize that he is the Son of God. Indeed, Muhammad is offended by the notion of three divine incorporeal entities, all three invisible yet equal and distinct entities that exist in one God. Because of the misguided teaching of the Trinitarians, he dissented from Christianity, which was truly an unfortunate tragedy for the world. Single is the basis, single the light of the word. Pantomorphous is the light, as it is the head of everything. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the basis of God's creatures. While aspects of 
Michael Sabitas' theology, Unitarian theology, I should say, will strike chords with some 21st century Unitarians and Unitarian Universalists. Much, if not all of it, may seem obscure and alien and even irrelevant to others. It isn't easy to think ourselves back into the mindsets of an idiosyncratic Spanish theologian in the tumultuous years of the 16th century. If the theology of Michael Savitas may seem incomprehensible today, can there be any other reason to commemorate it? Well, I think there is. Savitas may have been, as his enemies portrayed him, a stubborn and cantankerous man. But far more importantly, he was a man of conscience and of courage. He held strong religious beliefs, which in the end he was prepared to die for. That in itself may not have been remarkable at the time when martyrdom was the fate of all too many that made, uh, but what made Savitas more deserving of our recognition was this, that while in the end he was prepared to die for his faith, he was not prepared to kill for it. He thought it a serious matter to kill someone simply because of their religious beliefs or opinions. While he was almost too ready for his own good to lock horns in theological debate and argument, and even though he could be very acerbic, to put it mildly in the expression of his views, he did not propose burning his opponents at the stake. They, whether Catholic or Protestant, took a less charitable view of him. The story of his arrest, imprisonment, trial and execution illustrates all too well the bigotry, fanaticism and intolerance of those times, and perhaps in some respects of our own. But the fate of Michael Savitas became something of a cause célèbre, and it was a watershed in attitudes to religious toleration. 